Dalle sculture in sabbia, passando per la pittura ed altre forme miste di espressione, Vince Fozzo, artista italo-australiano, è oggi un affermato scultore nel panorama contemporaneo. La passione per l'arte l'ha accompagnato sin dall'infanzia. Um, I loved comic books. I remember uh, going to school little, as a little boy and uh, all my mates were um, uh, other little fat boys maybe, but uh, um, they were saying, you know, my mum would give me some money you know, and I'd sort of collect and say, oh, I want to buy a comic book. And if it's don't waste your money on comic books, go and get a cake, you know. <laughs> but I, used to, I, I, I sort of got fascinated with uh, all those early comic uh, superhero characters. When I was little, a little boy, uh, I was quite... I got quite grossly overweight and I, I was always artistic. I could draw like, I used to love Superman comics, all the comic sort of era. And uh, I remember I, I was very popular with other kids. I was very shy too because of this. You know, I started to get very fat. Um, and I used to, uh, kids used to like to line up and get tattoos of uh, Superman and I you know, used to draw all sorts of characters for them. So I realised that art was a way of communicating Well, for me, the, the human figure is, um, once again, thinking in, in, in a sculptural terms, sculpture's gone to a, such a degree where the human figure is, is re irrelevant to it. But um, I tend to think that uh, to reanimate, um, that's what I'm about, reanimating the dialogue. Most people would think it's impossible to create through the human figure, because it's been done over the years so many times, different ways that it's impossible to have a, a unique style, whereas I think I've got the unique style, and that's what, and once again, in, in the art world, I'm probably a little bit of a, not a maverick, or I don't know what word to use. Uh, anything that's original, has any form of originality, is always, in any e uh, field, is uh, a threat to the, to the rest of that practitioners. Uh, so it's, yeah, most people see my work and they just, it's, there's a freshness about it. So in a sense, I know that I've, I've got something that is uh, unique. Um, and that's what's more phenomenal, that it's a human figure. Uh, I remember uh, the art teacher at school, when I got into high school, um, one of the art teachers, yeah, we had to do an assignment, came back to school and the kids said, oh, it's her, Vince's drawings is fantastic. You should get 10 out of 10. And the teacher said, no, we'll give him nine and a half this week because we have to give him 10 next week. So, that's the encouragement also, if you get it. And that's what education is, I think, if you get, you can have a teacher that um, stamps um, creativity or a teacher that can uh, open up to, uh, to children's imagination. The current um, uh, philosophical ideas about my work are, I'm very much into f philosophical ideas. I, I do a lot of reading. That's, that's the, the feeding uh, part of your brain, that, what I would say to art students, is that you really need to, uh, you know, it's not just about doing a pretty object. You, you have to uh, feed your imagination and how you do that, to me, it's through reading. Uh, so I've read all the philosophical, uh, Plato, go, going all the way to where we are now. So it's from philosophy that, that um, I tend to think that uh, ideas come, come from. So my, my ideas at the moment are basic, would be classified as, it's called the uh, Cartesian dilemma, which is the mind and body split. And, and it relates to Descartes, the philosopher, the French philosopher, where he said that the idea of uh, the, the mind and the body are separate. And there's philosophers that disagree, contemporary would say that's not true, and there's the camp that says it, would, it is. I tend to think it is, it, it, there will always be uh, this split. Um, and that's where you get religion. Um, uh, so, so, so for me, at the moment, uh, I represent the spiritual qualities in, um, in the human face. So it's usually with uh, eyes closed, and it's like a, um, a reference to the Buddha's to the um, to the Christ face, it's always uh, in uh, with our eyes closed. So it's a sense of the idea of spiritual. 
the opposite of the spiritual is the um, corporal, the figure, uh, the earthly bound. So that's usually represented with a female figure. So that, that brings us back to earth, right? you know, the sensual. So that, that's where I'm at at the moment with this uh, du dualism. I'd be, a la I'd be classified as a lapsed Catholic, but I, my, my, my feelings are, are still um, intellect, in, in, intellectual, probably emotional. You see, there's a separa separation. In intellectual, we say one thing, but emotional, we'd say something else. So probably emotional, I probably would say, yes, my feelings are still um, in those areas. But intellectual, I'm open to, um, and I think that's how, to be a good, that's how I would say, to be a good Christian, because Christianity is full of hypocrisy, uh, once again because of the high ideal, uh, to be a good Christian, you should be a good Buddhist first. So most people would fall short of being a Buddhist. So that's where we are. So to, to be open to those different ideas um, of learning. I, I tend to say that um, um, sculpture is not about a medium. Like, I, I, if, for some reason, I, I work. I actually work in mixed media as well. Like a lot of people don't. You get known for a particular. That's the other thing. You, you get pigeonholed in art. Say if you look at Picasso. Let's make a reference to Picasso. Picasso did uh, all sorts of creativity. It wasn't just uh, the one thing. But once again, our short history of 200 years. It's very uh, provincial sort of uh, understanding of arts. And in, in, if you're involved in the arts, you tend to. If you're an oil painter in canvas, that's it. The, oh, I should so correct myself. If you're a, whatever medium you tend to work in, that's what they tend to fix. The history of Australian art tends to be oil on canvas. Um, if you're a painter, you're allowed to dabble into sculpture. Uh, the history tells us that. But if you're a sculptor, you aren't, you aren't, that's it. You know, you're not allowed to be a painter. Whereas I'm a painter, a, a drawer, mixed media. Uh, it just gets a little bit scary for them or some, for some reason. Cresciuto in una famiglia di genitori calabresi, sin da bambino Vince Vozzo si è trovato, come molti della sua generazione, a dover affrontare il conflitto tra due ben distinte identità culturali. Well, my father was uh, probably would have considered a bit of a jackaroo, I think that's the term, like he did all sorts of jobs. Uh, Basically, the early Italians were really, um, you know, were laborers. They came to Australia to make a better life, you know, for, from what, what they had. Um, uh, they, they would then hopefully have their children and send them off to university to become uh, solicitors, accountants, and uh, all paid professional jobs. So, in a sense, I'm sort of a black sheep of the Italians because you don't, you don't have really the Italians that uh, do creative areas. You know, my, my mum was okay with that idea, you know. Um, Usually mothers are a bit more lenient to their children, to sons, you know, what they want to do. But my father, um, you don't want to be an artist, you know, make no money, you know. So it was a sort of a money, um, you know, orientation. So in that sense, you know, I'm sort of always a, a black sheep. Yeah, but in, but in English, it's a bit more difficult. But I was, uh, I'm an, a, 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 I was born in Australia, but my parents are Italian. Um, so that my father actually came here in 1920. So he was one of the first Italians that uh, came to Australia, I think, yeah. Never really felt I was Italian and never really felt I was um, Australian. So it was that, you know, you, you were sort of in a mixed, uh, you remember my parents saying that, uh, obviously I wanted us to go more Italian, you know, like, uh, but the reality is that the culture around you wasn't Italian, you know, so that, that's the hard thing, you know, the jeering thing. Your friends, your mates were Aussies, you know, and, and um, you know, we used to go to the um, family, uh, all the cousins, you know, the Italians, you know, used to have their parties and all that sort of, uh, weddings, you know, all the, uh, yeah. Uh, obviously I'm Italian, Italian background, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm Australian. Uh, this is, a, you know, Australia, so, um, I always think I'm, I'm sort of got a bit of both, you know, and that's that's I think what what your ethnic background is, you know, you, you can't wipe wipe it away. Probably doing art um, obviously brings me closer to the Italians because of the history of of, of um, art being Italian in the, in, in the Renaissance, whereas a lot of the other Italians, uh, Australian Italians, you know, s slip in more into Anglo-Saxon society for the nature of their jobs, you know, uh, accountants or solicitors. They they can forget about their, their um, 
ancestry, you know, whereas I've probably more connected more, more and more with it. We, we grew up in the Liverpool, uh, Western Suburbs area, and I remember, and then we moved to Cabramatta, and Cabramatta in those days was like a um, one RSL club, you know, and later on the Vietnamese came in, which I think was a really uh, a great thing for Cabramatta because it just uplifted the area, you know, the Vietnamese restaurants and made it more interesting. But I remember when I was a little boy, um, standing outside the front of my, my, my parents' house when my parents actually locked the doors and I mean it was something out of almost like a movie like those old westerns you know where you I actually remember the the locals they were all Aussies and they were sort of jeering saying uh, the words wog hey wogs you know like like it was a I just always had that fixed in my head for some I don't remember what it was over but I remember my mum and dad were locked in the house and they kept us in the house it was like one of those westerns you know the, these uh, other family Aussies you know outside the front of the fence sort of hey use wogs you know so that's the reality, um, <clears throat> but now we are, have, uh, yeah, very fashionable to be, have the, I think still it's, uh, I think still the hypocrisy in a lot of these things, you know, like, uh, they love the Italian food, but the Italian artists, uh, if there is um, not so many, we're still kept a little bit out of the mainstream of the, the what is a 200 year Australian history. Um, so the fashion, the, the 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 fashion of art is really the, an Anglo-Saxon sort of thing. So if you're, obviously they talk about Italy, they love the Italian things, but they don't really want the Italian um, artists. That's the uh, one of the realities I've faced. And another uh, thing about the Italians themselves, that in a sense they're one of their worst enemies is, is themselves. They've got this sort of friction amongst themselves. They don't. No Italian really helps Italians, and that's something I've heard, and I think that's. Uh, um, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree. I disagree with that, but but generally that is the case. There is the little pockets of Italians that aren't like that. Um, I mean, if I just think of the Leichhardt, um, <coughs> Leichhardt area when they built the Forum, uh, the Italian Forum. I mean, the last thing that, uh, and this is something to do with the council. Uh, they had all the restaurants and all the um, you know, Aussies, and we love the Italian food, but the library, the cultural things. Uh, I think the library's just now been put in and, and the cultural centre is still vacant, there's nothing there. So that tells you a lot about um, the idea of culture. Most people like to wear culture on the sleeve, you know, they like to uh, say that they're cultural but it's not really a skin deep culture. Well I actually went to Italy once with um, <clears throat> with my parents when they wanted to go back to, to see their homeland. Uh, well, this is probably going back uh, oh, close to, uh, to, to 20 years ago, yeah. So that's the only time I've been overseas to see it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I really loved, uh, I mean, to be honest, if I could, uh, I've got a thing about flying, I don't like flying, I, so, so travelling for me is not, uh, and in the nature of what you do also, the nature of being an artist, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're in your studio bound. So the reality is that you you, you work. You know, so your you, you work, your base is is around you. You know, that's um, <clears throat> yeah. If I could just uplift myself, my studio, and just place myself into Rome. I loved Rome. You know, I love the old cobble streets and um, the coffee bars. I mean, I love going up to Newtown for my coffee here. But I'd be quite happy to uh, if I could just transport myself right into Rome and live there for the rest of my life. Nella prossima puntata approderemo nel mondo politico, un'altra grande passione degli italiani e vi presenteremo il Comitato Tricolore per gli italiani nel mondo. 